Welcome inside the Spartan Football Pregame Show. Alongside Bugle Sports Editor Bobby Leach, I'm Jim Wallen. We are coming to you from the Buffalo Wild Wings in Romeoville. Glad to have you with us. We begin with a major programming announcement. Regrettably, RPTV Sports will be unable to air the Argo Romeoville football game this evening. We, we appreciate your continued support of our product and look forward to seeing you next week as Romeoville will face off against Richards here at Spartan Stadium. Future away games will be posted on our website at rptvsports.com. Please go there for future information regarding schedules of volleyball and football this fall. We appreciate your support once again and look forward to your patronage. The Spartans head into week two after a disappointing home loss to rival Crete Moni, 14 to six. Special teams and the offensive aerial, aerial attack slowed down the Spartan pursuit of their first win in two years. Now Bobby, there was so much excitement heading into week one. The Bugle picked it, 13 to six. What happened? I'll tell you what happened with special teams. Unfortunately, the kids did come out, they were fired up, they were ready to rock, uh, band looked great, crowd was great, everybody was fired up for this game. But you know, in the early going in the first half, uh, special teams really cost them. Uh, they were holding their own against Creed. Bottom line is, is their defense is tough, uh, it came back uh, from last year, looked a lot tougher this year. They were, uh, the uh, corners uh, had a lot more speed than last year, linebackers were outstanding during the game. And uh, going into halftime, they were only down six to nothing. And again, it, it, you know, those six to nothing, uh, it showed up in special teams. Uh, what I saw in the first half was a lot of bad snaps. Um, they got their punt formation, kicked the ball, uh, but you know, Cunningham was picking the ball up off the ground in order to get that kick off. And uh, when you do that, when you when you one hop uh, a long snap to your punter. You know, it takes away from the yardage. Uh, when he did get a good punt off, there was a lot of problems with it. Uh, we had two penalties that were called back. He had a 60-yard punt that was called back on a five-yard penalty. Uh, it was an offsides penalty, and that can happen to any team. But happening to the Spartans at that point was really difficult. It put them in a position where they gave up 25 yards in field position and ultimately gave up their first score of the season. But Bobby, there were some key plays in the fourth quarter that cost the Spartans the W. What was the sequence? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the key play in the game, at 11 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, game is still tied at this point, six to six, after a three yard plunge by quarterback Steve Gilbo. Uh, there was a block punt. Again, it came down to special teams. They, uh, it was fourth down, fourth and eight. Uh, Spartans had the ball at their own 19 yard line. Bad snap, again, the snap was high. Block, uh, the kick was blocked. Ultimately, it fell into the end zone. Creek covered it. And uh, that's all she wrote. I mean, that, that, that put Crete on top at that point, uh, 12 to 6, and they got a two point conversion, making it 14 to 6. You know, the very next play out, and again, a special teams blunder. Um, you know. And in a defensive struggle, you can't afford to have mistakes. They give away turnovers, give away the ball in any way, shape, or form. Well, I'll tell you, there were several key plays in this game, uh, but the biggest play came in the fourth quarter with 11.02 left. The game is tied 6-6 six to six at this point. And uh, at that point, there was a blocked punt. A blocked punt. Uh, blocked into the end zone, Creek covers the ball, gets the two-point conversion, goes up 14-6. to six. And that really hurt. I mean, at this point, there's 11 minutes left in the game. They've tied, they've battled it all game long. Uh, Ortega, uh, Josh Ortega, uh, kept him in the game with the picks. Yes, he uh, did. Steve Gilbo, man, I'll tell you, that kid, that kid looked great. But the problem was is that they rolled Steve Gilbo the entire game. It was Gilbo left, Gilbo right, Gilbo up the middle, punt. And eh. short of punting, short of punting the, the, the ball himself, Gilbo did it all out there, but he couldn't do enough. And unfortunately, Crete loaded the box up with eight men, and uh, the Spartans just could not get an aerial attack going. So when you're in a defensive struggle such as this, it's just unfortunate when it comes down to the turnover battle and you lose it. I mean, most games you're not going to win when you're in a defensive struggle and you lose the turnover battle. Well, case in point is uh, that Romeoville turned the ball over again with uh, 8.40 to go in the game. They got, after the block punt, 
And a nice run back by Charles Smith. Senior Charles Smith ran it back to the 41-yard line. They had good field position. Again, a penalty comes out. They get a five-yard penalty, start over. And Gilbo now rushes the ball not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. And on first and ten on the fourth possession or fourth carry of Gilbo, he fumbled the ball and turned the ball over once again. That put him in a deep hole uh, in the fourth quarter. And I, I actually saw on the sidelines for the first time in the entire game, some of the heads kind of go down. They were a little bit worried about losing that game. And uh, it was amazing that they were able to stay in it. As Coach Gonzalez said, they were treating this like a playoff game. And when you lose the first game, it may not mean much to some programs, but for this one, who has been so ravaged by injury, ravaged by school district, re, re, uh, who, has, who has been ravaged by injuries, has been ravaged by school district reorganization. This was an important game for the Spartans. And now that they didn't win, they will have to go on the road to Argo and steal one from a pretty good team, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, I want to point out one, I want to point out one more fact, and that the, the, the fact is, is that the Spartans were in this game to the last second ticked off the clock, literally to the last second ticked off. They got the ball back with a little more than five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Instead of laying down, these kids came back and they fought. They fought, they got the ball at the ten, their own 10-yard line, drove the ball through penalties and some great play calling, and Steve Gilbo again running the ball well. Got it, brought it all the way down to that they had with uh, 206 left to go in the game. They had a first and goal at the seven yard line. Unfortunately, they came up four yards short. Uh, on fourth and two, they fumbled the ball, lost possession of the ball. We thought that that's it, game over. Nope, that's not it. Defense came out, held them, fought again to the end. With 19 seconds left, they forced Creep to punt the ball. They got the ball at the Creep 47 yard line, had an opportunity. Uh, quarterback Doobie came in. And, uh, you know, uh, Ron Doobie, he's a 6'2", 178-pound senior. He came in, he's got the gun. So they brought him in for that play-action pass. It didn't work, but, but it showed me that the kid was throwing the ball deep. He threw it twice to Ortega and uh, once to uh, uh, Josker Denby. Came up short. The last play of the game was a heartbreaker. I mean, this kid was uh, fighting traffic, offensive line. The pocket collapsed. He had no choice. Linebacker's coming at him. He's going to take off and run. Gets an eight-yard game, but that's it. That's all she wrote. That was the end of the game. That's how they lost it. But they lost it going down fighting. And, uh, and that's a big difference over last year. Last year, we were getting blown out of games. I, I, I just don't see that that's the case this year. This is a different team and a different era under Coach Steve Gonzalez. Earlier this week, Bobby caught up with Spartans head coach Steve Gonzalez, and here are his thoughts. Hey, this is Bob Leach, RPTV. Thanks for tuning in. I'm also the sports editor for the Romeo Bugle. I'm standing here with Coach Steve Gonzalez. Fortunately, we had a tough loss last week. Coach, can I ask you a little bit about the game? Sure. Um, uh, uh, special teams seem to be a real thorn for you guys last week. Uh, 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 snaps in particular on, on, the, on the punt coverages were a little tough for you. Um, how have you addressed that this week, and, and what are you going to do going into Argo? Uh, with your special teams? Well, with the players near it, I told them last week, I mean, especially after the game, you practice how you play. And we, we practice exactly how we played. I mean, practice all last week in specials. You know, we took it, you know, near it, not seriously. And the snaps were the same exact way. And we practice how you play. And near it, uh, with, with the punting formation, with, with, with the special teams, near it, we made some changes on specials this week. Definitely made changes. Got a new snapper. Hopefully he can step up to the plate, you know, and, 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 and uh, Bottom line, get the ball back there. Um, you know, just watching film, watching film, and on that block punt against uh, against against uh, Creep Moni and everything else, so it was just mental errors up front and everything else. So it was just missed blocks, and we 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 emphasized our punt team and our specials. You gotta protect, protect, protect first, then fly down to the ball. So there's been changes been made throughout this whole week for for our special team. So on Friday night and everything, you're gonna see uh, brand new faces out there on specials. Well, on the bright side, Cunningham seemed to really be able to punt the ball well. He was uh, getting a lot of hang time uh, when he did get the uh, the punt off. It was uh, it was a boomer. You know, it really, he really looks like he's a good punter. What do you think? He's a very good punter. This is his first time playing football. Um, he was very very nervous uh, before the game. Came up to me and uh, you know he was he was very sweaty, and nervous, and I said, hey. You go out there and relax. I just try to put myself in his shoes back when I first played football. And uh, and like I said, he's a great kicker. He's got a great leg. He's uh, he's a junior. I'm glad to have him uh, on my on my on my roster. 
You know, uh, defense, uh, you guys were very strong defensively. Your team speed has obviously improved during the offseason. Uh, I think that uh, I think most people that watched the game last week uh, or this week, uh, they all noticed a, a big change in team speed. You hung with Crete. You, in fact, I think you dominated Crete on uh, the defensive side of the ball. They didn't game, but uh, I'm guessing 105 yards is what we had uh, down for yardage. Um, so you guys did a pretty good job in stopping them and, and, and keeping them play for play. Um, Ortega, what do you what do you think about it? I mean, he did a, a heck of a job at safety. A couple of picks in the last game. Um, you know, how, how do you feel about uh, his play during that game? And and how do you feel he's going to step up in uh, against Argo? Josh is a good player. He's a he's not just a good player. He's a smart player. And after we uh, like I said now stuff on defensively, and after we respect a lot of things out of him uh, and they have to expect a lot of things from him. He's a very, very, very intense player, but in bottom line, he's a smart player. Um, he's one of our best cornerbacks. Probably one, uh, he probably is the best quarterback on our team. Just uh, regarding the defense, team defense, and they have to, we emphasize every single day of practice, even during doubles and triples in a summer camp, pursuit, pursuit, pursuit to the ball. No matter if you're backside corner or, or backside end, we want, tw like, uh, and also I call it in practice, 12 guys on the ball. Okay, when coach just watch that film there they should see so many numbers on that pile and we emphasize that every single day so hopefully that helps out to our advantage with you know going into the games of uh, practicing you know practicing that every single day uh dorian last week uh he he played both ways for you guys he was a linebacker also played fullback did a great job on both sides of the ball as far as i could tell he was in a lot of plays um how much are you depending on him to to, to keep that level of intensity up through the course of the season Dorian's the first one out here in practice, the last one to leave. He, I, I, you know, with the coach staff and myself, we expect a lot of things out of Dorian. Uh, he was a sophomore last year, he was the captain of the team, so that tells you what what he's about. He preaches what he teaches. Um, you know, the you know, scary thing is with Dorian is he doesn't know when to, when to stop in there. So i got to you know, find a time, say, hey, slow it down, because he doesn't, he doesn't know when to stop. He's he's, he's full speed and, 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 and full and full double speed, if, if there's such thing as that. He doesn't have one slow mo uh, like one slow motion in his, in his body. Um, so I'm trying to avoid putting him on specials, keep him on concentrating on the offense and defense side only. Uh, last week uh, against Crete, uh, you guys got about 171 yards in total offense. A lot of that yardage came from uh, quarterback Steve Gilbel, senior, 150 pound, 5'10". Um, how do you feel he's going to do against Argo? One of the downsides uh, looked like uh, we weren't able to throw the ball a lot. They were stacking, uh, the Crete defense started stacking the line. They had eight men in the box. How are you going to address that this week? Should uh, another team uh, give you that kind of a look, on a uh, defensive look? Well, Gilbert played a heck of a game on Friday night. He got a lot of his yards on his own, um, just because uh, up front, uh, up front lineman just got pushed back, and he made, like I said, he made something out of nothing. Um, just, just once again, this this past week, you know, to know some practice, we focus on our linemen, and you know, we have to concentrate on picking up that blitzer. Um, just by the scouting reports, Argo's going to bring the heat. If I was on their side, of, uh, uh, if I was watching from the stands, just scouting us, you know, to know, so I'll be bringing eight guys all the time there, just like you know, just like they did last week, and we expect that. We expect that from Argo, just by watching their film from the first game. You know, they bring blitzers back and forth, and you know, to know, they bring a lot of heat, and I expect that a lot this week. So we have to be able to pick up that linebackers. Um, you know, coming back uh, after a tough loss, uh, how are the kids feeling this week? I mean, that, that, that was a, a tough loss. Again, it was a, a block punt in the fourth quarter. That seemed to be the downfall. However, you guys fell about four, four yards short of tying the game towards the end of the game there on that fourth and, fourth and two call. Um, so it was, a real it was a real tight game, but how, how's the morale of the team right now? Right now, right now, it's good. It's good. The guys, you know, the guys. Like I said, we talked over after the game. We talked throughout the week. You know, these guys never saw 14 points on that visitor sideline in quite some time. You know, they know they played a heck of a game on offense and defensively. And you know, we just got to make some, you know, made changes on the specials. These guys are are very, very, very motivated to prove to not just the school and 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 the students and and the here at Romero, but the community that Romero football is back. So these guys are ready to play this week. They're very excited. This game is going to be, like I said, it's going to be a bar burner. You know, Argo, they're a young team. You know, they have, you know, about 25 guys, 29 guys, just like us and everything else. And it's going to be a heck of a game. Last question, Coach. How do the coaches hold up uh, during halftime? Um
you know, the, the, does the pressure get to you guys at, at halftime? Um, uh, I know that it seemed like there was really good communication going on on the sidelines. Uh, your coaching staff seemed like they were really into the game, um, seemed very organized. But behind the scenes, how well do you guys keep it together when you're down 6 nothing? You guys had a shot to come in. You could have laid down in the second half. You didn't do that. You guys, the team came back, fought back, scored in the fourth quarter. Um, but how do you guys manage that when you're down? Well, and it's tough, you know. It's tough, and everything else. We got to keep the morale up with ourselves and everything else, because the kids feed off for us. The kids see us down there, everything else, or whatever, or frustrated. The kids are going to be frustrated. Um, and on during halftime, we made adjustments. We made some adjustments. They like to just by scout reports and from just the first half, you know, the reports. They like to just run behind that fullback. We made some adjustments to that, and you know, we just had to keep the morale up with the with, with, with the coaches. It was my job to keep the morale up with the coaches and coaches and everything fed off me, and the kids fed off my assistant coaches. Thanks a lot, Coach. Well, Coach Gonzalez has a plan. Hopefully, the Spartans can execute it better this week. And, you know, one way or another, we'll definitely find out which Spartan team is showing up. That's for sure, isn't it, Bobby? Absolutely. You know, Coach Steve Gonzalez, you know, he had to go back to work. He had to go back and, and adjust his special teams play. They've worked on it all week. They replaced their long snapper, uh, so I think that that's going to be key. They've also worked on their offensive line. Their offensive line was a little soft in the game. They had uh, a couple of mistakes. They, 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 they've got to get out there and, and, and form a wall. They, they, I think that they missed a lot of assignments. Uh, but, it, again, it's the first game of the season. It's something that's not unexpected with a, with a first-game high school football team. But this team is clearly a better team than it was last year. And hopefully that experience, that added incentive, will bring them another victory Another victory. Another, another, another victory. All right. Uh, okay. Let's that's go up. to the grading part right after that. All right. So, Bobby, if you had to grade the offense, defense, and special teams, just like a teacher, what would they receive in your classroom? Well, in my classroom, they received, first of all, a check mark in the most improved category. I think the entire team has uh, improved immensely. Uh, this season. Um, their offense, uh, with a lack of passing, a lack of, a, a, of depth, um, you know, their offense was a little rough. I'd have to go with about a B, a, a B minus for, for offense. Defense, though, that's the bright spot. Uh, that's the bright, bright side. Yeah, bright spot of the team. Defense this year, absolutely a B plus. They came out, they're faster, they're quicker, they hit hard, and they swarmed to the ball. That's something completely different from last year's team. The big Achilles heel for this team is going to be the special teams that we've been talking about this whole program. Uh, special teams, I'm going to give a D. I, I can't give any Romeoville team an F because uh, F just doesn't uh, affect uh, our grading scale. But, you know, as low as I can go, I'm going to give them a D. Uh, the one bright spot uh, was Cunningham. Cunningham was a great punter. When he did get his punts off, great hang time. He had a 60-yard punt out there. So I give, I give uh, Cunningham a lot of credit. Uh, he was under the under the gun quite a bit, uh, but I got to give him a D. Overall, my grade for the Spartans against Crete is going to have to be a B. Well, I guess I'll just have to deal with that, huh, Bobby? Yeah, they'll have to deal with that. When we return, we will take an in-depth look into the Argo Argonauts, the Spartans' opponent this week. And before we break away, take a look at the scores from around the Sika Orange. While the Spartans are heading up I-55 to Summit, they will face host Argo in an SICA Orange Interconference Showdown. The Argonauts come in 1-0 after defeating non-conference foe Tinley Park in dramatic fashion. The score was 22-20 with a late touchdown pass sealing the deal for the visiting Argonauts. Now Bobby, this is a 500 team, generally speaking, in their history. They have two playoff appearances under their head coach Jim Innes. What are your thoughts of their team and what the Spartans' prospects are for a W in Summit this evening? Well, I think the Spartans this year, uh, in Summit, I think they're going to win the ball game. I think hands down they're going to win the ball game. They've got a stronger defense uh, than they did last year. They match speed for speed with Argo. They match up well with this team. You know, bottom line is, is uh, th this is a team, though, that is returning uh, 15 players from last year's team, 13 starters. And uh, so that, you know, that's going to cause problems for the Spartans. This is not going to be an easy game. We are picking them to win 15 to 13 in the bugle, but again, it's not going to be an easy game. It's going to take an all-out effort. It's going to take an all-out effort, one thing, absolutely. But one thing that is encouraging to me is uh, the fact that Tinley Park, who is not known for putting together powerful teams, has actually, ru actually rushed last week for almost 200 yards. Two of their ball carriers almost rushed for 200 yards 
behind, of course, an, a senior-laden offensive line.